notes are about how we would multiply and divide rational expressions, as well as how we would simplify complex fractions. Let's start off with how we would multiply two fractions. a over b multiplied by c over d would be defined as ac over bd. We have to note that this is only true if b and d are not equal to zero. Otherwise, we would have division by zero, which is undefined. Take note here that you do not need a common denominator to multiply fractions. All we did was we multiplied the two values in the numerator, that became our new numerator, and we multiplied the two values in the denominator, that was our new denominator. Let's see how this might look when we don't have just simple values in all of our numerators and denominators. Now we have these slightly more complicated algebraic expressions. So take a look at the pink example here. We have x minus 3 over 4x plus 2 multiplied by 2x divided by 3x minus 9. And you might just feel like multiplying the numerators right away, multiplying the denominators, but if we think ahead to what that's going to look like, it will give us a quadratic expression on the top and a quadratic expression on the bottom. Then, if I was trying to simplify, I'd have to um, try to factor those quadratics. So it's going to be in our best interest to factor all parts of it first. Factor first. Let's see what that would look like. Well, the x minus 3 can't be factored anymore. 4x plus 2, I know I can pull a 2 out, and I'll be left with x plus 1. Times 2x, there's nothing we can really do with that. And if we factor out a 3 um, from the 3x minus 9, we get 3 times the quantity x minus 3. We then want to see if there's any common factors on the numerator and the denominator in order to cancel. So we've seen before um, a lot of errors in canceling. We have to be careful what we can cancel. We cannot cancel Let's see if I can find my laser pointer. We can't cancel this 3 with this 3, because notice this is an x minus 3. But notice, we can cancel this 2 with this 2, because it's a 2 times x, and a 2 times the quantity x plus 1. They're both factors. One's a factor in the numerator, and one is a factor in the denominator. Both of those 2's. Again, it's all multiplication we're dealing with here, so we are allowed to factor. Think about when I multiplied. If I was to multiply, I'd have a 2 in the top and a 2 in the bottom. So even though I haven't yet written it as a single fraction, I can still cancel. And it's always in your best interest to cancel before you multiply. Cancel before multiplying. There's one other thing that we can cancel. We have an x minus 3 as a factor on the bottom and an x minus 3 on the factor on the top. I mentioned we can't cancel the negative 3. That's not actually a factor because it's not being multiplied. It's being subtracted from x. But if we look a little bit bigger, if we look at sort of a larger chunk, this x minus 3 whole factor can be canceled with this whole factor of x minus 3. It's all about recognizing the larger chunks within the problem. x minus 3, that whole binomial, can be, um, can be canceled. So now when we multiply our numerators, we get, well, the only thing left on the top is that x, and left on the bottom is the 3 times the quantity x plus 1. Notice how much simpler this fraction looks than if we were to have multiplied right away in the beginning and gotten a quadratic over a quadratic. The last thing we want to do is state your restrictions. Let's talk about what that means. State restrictions. So what we did was we simplified an expression, and our expression only involved x for this example. And we have to be careful because when we say simplify, we mean rewrite a simpler version of the original expression, but the simplified version must always have the same value for whatever we decide to plug in for x as the original. So what if I decide to plug in 3 for x? If you look at our final simplification, plugging in 3 for x is no problem. But if you look back at the original, plugging in 3 is a big problem because then you'd have a 0 in this denominator. So x equals 3 is something that we can't plug in that we didn't notice at the end because we canceled it away, essentially. So I have to make sure I say that, that x is not allowed to be 3. Somebody coming new into this problem might look at this guy and say, oh, 
I want to know what that is when x is 3. But we really can't say that because it's coming from this original thing. And if you plug in 3 for x, that would end up being 0. Now there's another restriction on x that we can also say. We also know that x can't be equal to negative 1. The reason why it's not as important to write that one down is because it was obvious. No one would try to plug in negative 1 because in our final simplification, that um, expression is still there. It wasn't something we canceled away. So what's important to write down are definitely the restrictions that we canceled away, like that one, and then the second one isn't as necessary. It's not a bad idea to write it down, but we don't really need to say it because it's kind of obvious. Let's look at an example of division. First off, we have our um, idea of what it means a over b divided by c over d. What that is, is a over b times d over c. Multiplying fractions means that, sorry, dividing fractions means that we're really multiplying by the reciprocal. Notice I changed the division symbol to multiplication, and instead of writing c over d, I wrote d over c. Again, this is only the case when b, d, and c are not equal to zero. Notice we have to be careful about c this time as well, this numerator, because it turned into a denominator. Essentially, we never want a denominator of zero anywhere in the problem, whether it's your original, the work you're doing, or your final answer. We never want zero in the denominator. Again, we want to try to simplify our, or sorry, factor our expressions first. So here in our example, x plus 5 can't really be factored anymore. Um, 3y can't really be factored anymore. Divided by, um, I can take the 2 out and we have x plus 5. And y squared can't really be factored anymore. So that wasn't so bad to factor that one. Now let's apply what we have in blue up at the top. We're going to keep our first uh, expression the same, x plus 5 divided by 3y. But instead of dividing, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. It does matter which one you're flipping over. That's not the same as the reciprocal times you know, the second fraction. It's Division is the same as multiplication by the reciprocal. Do you see any common factors we can cancel now? Now it looks just like a previous example. Now it's just multiplication. I see an x plus 5 and an x plus 5. And I see a y and a y up here. So this would just become a y if I cancel out one y from the y squared. And now we get y over 3 times 2, which is 6. Don't forget we want to write down all the restrictions on this because back at the beginning I see a lot of restrictions that kind of went away. Y was not allowed to be 0. That's coming from all the way back here. Or here you could look at there's a couple places where it would be an issue to plug in 0. Another restriction is that X can't be equal to negative 5. That's coming from over here, essentially. Here's where we saw the X plus 5 in the denominator. So we have to be careful. We canceled out those expressions so we don't see them readily in our final answer. This is our simplification. These are our restrictions. We need both of those, otherwise it's not fully correct. Because someone might come along and try to plug y um, equals 0 into that expression, but we actually can't. Our last example is an example of a complex fraction. And you've probably already noted why this is called a complex fraction. A complex fraction is a fraction within a fraction. Um, you can have fractions within fractions within fractions if you want, but more than one iteration of that would be considered a complex fraction. So here we have x over 5 plus 3 over x, that whole thing's the numerator, divided by 2y over 5 plus 7. So our job is to simplify this, and it's a little bit hard to wrap your brain around it when you look at it you know, as a whole thing. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just kind of ignore the denominator for a second, and let's just look at the numerator. Let's see if we can simplify x over 5 plus 3 over x. And if you understand fraction addition from, you know, last class or whenever you looked at that, um, then this really isn't any different. It's just kind of combining all of the ideas we've talked about so far. x over 5 plus 3 over x, we need a common denominator there. Looks like 5x. So I'm going to call that x squared over 5x plus 15 over 5x. 
Notice I multiplied that first fraction by x over x, and I multiplied the second fraction by 5 over 5, just adding two fractions together by finding a common denominator. And that becomes x squared plus 15 all over 5x. So I took care of that whole numerator from the original problem. Let's go back to the beginning, that pink giant complex fraction. Now let's only focus on the denominator. 2y over 5 plus 7. I'd like to add those together. Of course, that's really a 7 over 1. The common denominator is 5. So let's multiply that second fraction by 5 over 5. And we get 2y plus 35 all over 5. So we have our new numerator is all the way over here. Our new denominator is all the way over here. So let me actually just rewrite that. x squared plus 15 over 5x. That was our numerator. And our denominator is 2y plus 35 all over 5. Think about what this says. Numerator divided by denominator. Numerator divided by denominator. In the pink expression that I just rewrote, all I did was I rewrote this giant fraction using this division symbol instead of this division bar. That's all I did. I rewrote it so it looked more like a division problem that we saw on the previous page. Because now I know what to do. I can say that that's the same as multiplication by the reciprocal. And it's easier to see when you rewrite it as division like that instead of using the division bar. But we don't have to. Let's see what that'll look like now. x squared plus 15 over 5x times 5 over 2y plus 35. Now I've turned it all the way back into multiplication, which is the very first example we did. I want to make sure that everything's fully factored so I can try to find things that cancel. The only things that factor here are, um, well, I actually don't, not sure I see anything that fully factors, but I do actually see the only thing that cancels here is the 5. I see a 5x and a 5. So when I rewrite our final simplification, we have an x squared plus 15 on the top. And on the denominator, we have an x times 2y plus 35. I don't even think it, some, I hear some students when I was asked, do I need to distribute that x in and call it 2xy plus 35x? It doesn't matter. But if it doesn't matter, don't bother doing it. it it's, I think it's okay to leave it like that uh, because now I can actually really clearly see any restrictions. So let's see, what are the restrictions? Well, from what we canceled, the only thing we canceled was the 5, um, but look at what ended up all the way in the denominator. I see that x can't be equal to 0, that's kind of an obvious restriction, and y can't be equal to 35 halves, that's also an obvious restriction. If I look back in the beginning, um, here's a denominator, x can't be 0, well we already have that. Um, here's another denominator that's not creating any restrictions. Um, x can't be 0, here's another denominator. If I look back, it doesn't seem to be that we've canceled anything away. It doesn't seem like there's any non-obvious restrictions. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Here's our final simplification. Here are our restrictions. They were both obvious. I didn't really need to write them in, but not a bad idea. Um, and we've simplified our complex, fra our complex fraction. So notice that in all three of these examples, we eventually got down to just a multiplication of fractions. And if you're doing these correctly, I think that that should always happen. If you understand fraction multiplication, you understand fraction addition, then none of these simplifications should really be that challenging. It's really the same as with numbers. We just have expressions. Good luck.